Hello and welcome again to the Phil Taylor Jones Show. Uh, this morning I come to you in utter disgust as well as a lot of pain. Pain, you might say? Yes, this time real physical pain. Once again, we're going to visit the subject of illegal foreigners and their impact on American society. Yesterday, I um, got up like I normally do sometimes to make a run to the grocery store to pick up some supplies. And uh, that I did. And I was returning home. I'd gotten a little breakfast from Jack in the Box. And, um, I was returning home. It's approximately 10 o'clock. I'm not, I'm not five miles from home. In fact, I'm probably about maybe less than a mile from home, three blocks away. Light turns green. I always do my little, you know, look to the sides to make sure everything is safe. I proceed across the street and out of nowhere, this foreigner hits me. Blam! Now, let me set this up properly. Those of you who are familiar with the show know that I live in Los Angeles, California. California, the state being the highest tax state in the nation, I pay very high <laughs> insurance rates. <clears throat> Excuse me. In Los Angeles, <clears throat> the insurance rates are through the roof. Now, if you live in the really outskirts of town, like uh, Apple Valley or somewhere like that, uh, Idlewild, or, you know, a really remote place, your insurance premiums um, are somewhat low, like $15 a month, just for like, I guess, straight liability. Uh, and, you know, as much as maybe 70 some odd dollars for full coverage, contingent upon what kind of car you have, how new it is, etc. My insurance rates are through the roof as it is because of where I live, because of all these illegal foreigners and some of them that are legal that can't drive. So as I alluded to yesterday, I'm on my way home and this foreign bastard slams right into me. Thank goodness I have an older Ford Explorer and the bumpers and things are made out of metal. So there was somewhat minor damage to my car, even though I took quite a jolt. That's why I'm rubbing my wrist right now because the forward motion, even though I was belted, you know, I still lurched forward a little bit. I had my hand on the wheel and it kind of jammed and my knee jammed. Her car was a mess. She had a Lexus ES330. And the whole front end of it was just tore up, it, it, leaking all over the place. And, you know, my car is, is, is messed up, but thank goodness it's a big, bulky SUV because the outcome could have been a lot worse. She didn't even try to brake. You know, she's just, just driving. And I, I caught it and I tried to brake, but she was just on me like a tick on a dog and blam. So I was able to get my car started and I pulled back and parked the side of the road and she then followed. And I got out of the car and she was like, I, 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 I don't know, I, 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 I thought the light was green. I said, how could you just, I said, were you on the phone? Were you texting? I mean, I got a great big old SUV, but how could you not see that? Whether or not this bastard was illegal or not, it lends credence to the fact that I've been preaching about, even before I started this, this YouTube thing, there are too many of these foreigners, whether they're legal or illegal, in this country. They are encroaching upon our damn lives. I could have been killed yesterday because of this idiot. She was dazed. 
you know, she was sitting there like, <coughs> she was whacked out on drugs or something. You know, what were you saying, uh, Chris? She didn't try to turn on Yeah, she just blam, right? She didn't even try to break, didn't even try to swerve, didn't even say she was sorry for running into my damn car. Are you okay? The only thing she asked me, is, is it my car? Is, is it my car? Did you drive? I said, I don't know and I don't care. I'm worried about my car, the one you ran into. Now here's the rub. I now got to get my car repaired. Deal with insurances. For any of you out there who have ever had this kind of thing happen to you, that's not a fun experience. Then my, my insurance premiums may skyrocket because of some idiotic, stupid ass foreigner who should have been left over there in the idiotic place you came from. My God, when is this gonna stop? To add insult or injury, maybe about the same time my incident happened in Chattanooga, Tennessee, four Marines were killed by a foreigner. They don't even know whether or not the legalities of this bastard, whether he was here legally or whether he was illegally here. An illegal foreigner, possibly part of Al Qaeda or ISIS or what have you. And my God, I went on the Google Plus thing and how disgusted I was to see that some people had posted this. I even made a post myself, but some Idiotic Americans are still chomping at the bit, beating on the tom-toms in favor of these illegal and legal foreigners. My God, how stupid can you be? What good are they here? Why are they here? What good, what fucking purpose do they serve? That you should get on the tom-toms, beating on the tom-toms in support of them. They're encroaching upon your life. They're running into you with their damn cars. Fact and the, the point in fact, I was in the grocery store even before I got hit by this damn foreigner in the car. I almost got run over by a kid on a damn scooter. A little foreign ass bastard on a damn scooter in the grocery store going full tilt down the aisles. And I happened to be coming around the corner, blam, he runs smack into my basket. I guess that was a preamble of what was going to take place some 15 minutes later. After he fell on his ass, he got up and just hopped back on the scooter and shot off like a bat out of hell down the store. And then he ran over an old lady. My God, what are you so in support of? You're lambasting in Donald Trump because he said that they shouldn't be here. What do you see in them? Is it that you're wearing your pearls or you're in your little Giorgio Armani suit and you're living up in some place that you don't even, you, know, you don't have to interact with them so you don't care? But for us people that have to interact with these bastards every goddamn day, suffering injuries and, and, and break-ins and murders and rapes and child molestings and vandalism, you name it, we suffer this crap. So we're not in support of them. Now, for you naysaying bastards out there that may say, well, you're just like Trump. You're saying all of them are like that. I'm not saying that all of them commit heinous crimes. I'm not even saying that all of them commit any crime except for the fact of all of their dead asses, rest their asses across their fucking border. But still, what the hell are you so in support of? They shouldn't be here. Immigration reform in my end of, end of the ticket means that we close the damn borders for at least 
40 years. There is no more coming to this country. Well, some of the refugees, they're here, they're going, they're coming in, in, in you know, search of a better life. Well, go find it somewhere else. There's lots of countries on this green and blue planet we call Earth. Go infiltrate them and leave our country the hell alone. That law that is in effect saying that we are here to accept refugees, somebody needs to wipe that bastard off the books. We've had enough. We have given till it hurts. A lot of you don't know this because I've never said it, I've never told anybody, but approximately 12 years ago, I was standing on the corner of Wilshire and Irobo. I was gonna go across the street to McDonald's or either Togo's to pick up some sandwiches on the way home from work. I had my CD player and you know my headphones. Now, to set this up properly on the corner of Wilshire and Irolo, that's a big corner for protests in LA here. And, you know, it's nothing to see a bunch of people waving and, you know, beating the tom-toms for whatever cause that they are there for at that moment. So usually if I see a big crowd like that, I don't pay much attention. I may read some of their signs to see what they're talking about, but generally I say, oh, well, there's just another bunch of them up there barking and screaming mostly foreigners, you know. Um, so I'm standing on the curb and people are just waving and, and shouting and what have you. Well, this time they were trying to tell me that some SUV was coming and, you know, to get out of the way. Well, what had happened was one of these foreigners that were here jumped the curb in a big old Ford Expedition and hit me. I woke up three days later in the in the hospital. Well, some good Samaritans chased the bastard down the street and they caught him at a red light and pulled him out of the car and held him until the police could get there. Turns out he was a Korean national or whatever and he had diplomatic immunity. So they had ushered that bastard out of the country before he could even be questioned by the police. And even if he were here, they couldn't have touched him because he was a, uh, he had diplomatic immunity. So he almost killed me, hit me and knocked me about 10 feet. I was out in the middle of, of, of Irolo Street from the corner where I was standing in the middle of the street. The paramedics had to, you know, naturally come get me, patch me up, to take me to the hospital. I'm saying something needs to happen in this damn country, and it needs to happen fast. They're killing us, literally. And for you idiots out there that are beating on the tom-toms in support of them, if there were some system by which we could get their asses out of here, you need to pack your damn bags and follow them since you love them so much. Because from where I sit, today in pain, and where those families of those four military uh, personnel that were shot up by this foreign ass bastard, and now they're grieving, they may have been trying to plan little vacations or, or family togetherness in some, in some way. Now they gotta plan for funeral funerals. And let me add this, these weren't just four citizens that were killed. These were Marines, trained men and women. I don't know the actual gender of the four that are now deceased, but they were trained people, <clears throat> highly sophisticatedly trained people, and this bastard blew them away. So how are your damn foreigners working out for you, you lovers of them? The ones beating on the Tom Toms in support of them being here. The ones that are criticizing Trump and others like Trump who want to get them the hell out of here because they're wrecking our goddamn lives. How is it working out for you?
Maybe one day you're walking down the street and one of your beloved illegal foreigners or your legal foreigners come and blow your ass away or run you over in a car. Maybe you're walking with your little son or daughter and one of them's texting on the phone and they run your ass over and kill you. How would you feel about them? Well, you'd be dead, but your family might figure they're not so, you know, wonderful to be here because I've lost my husband and my daughter or my wife and my son or what have you. There have been senior citizens run over by these bastards and they keep going down the street. And then months later they catch up with them and this bastard didn't even have a driver's license, doesn't have any insurance and stole the car. I could go on for days with incidences with illegal foreigners and some of them that are illegal that shouldn't be here. But it's got to stop. And to message to you, Mr. Trump, keep on keeping on. Don't let anybody get in your way. I hope that you can get in there because I believe that you are honest hearted in your thinking and it's time for somebody like you to get in there and clean the damn house. And for you supporters, whether you be just regular Joe Blow citizens or whether you be some of these political muckety mucks who are practicing these silly ass second grader politics. The next time something happens to you and it's one of your beloved illegal foreigners, then good for you. Because if you had any damn sense, you would be jumping on the bandwagon with Trump and other people who want to get them the hell out of here because they don't need to be here because they are encroaching upon our lives, they're endangering our lives, and they should not be here. The only immigration reform that should take place is closing the damn borders for no less than 40 years. And anything that's here that shouldn't be here, get them the hell out on the first goddamn thing smoking. One last thing before we close out this, this uh, episode. Old bastard went to the prison to visit, Just chomping at the bit, beating on the tom-toms about his stupid prison reform thing. And they had a picture of it. For those of you who Follow me on Google Plus. You probably saw it. He is standing there. There's one guard going through a door and there's another one standing behind him. I said, this is a good picture, but with three revisions. One, this bastard, oh bastard, should have been in an orange prison suit. Secondly, he should have been handcuffed and shackled. And thirdly, they should have been marching his sorry ass to solitary confinement. For therefore, he'd stay there for 40 years or the end of his life, whichever comes first. And just this morning, on the heels of the Chattanooga incident, this time, I guess it's this guy's American. Not to say that they don't commit crimes either, but at least there's legal citizens. This bastard, a sex offender who obviously had been in the joint and is now out has killed up three people. Was it three? I think it's three or four. I forgot. I read it and it, it, my mind got discombobulated because I'm still hurting and, and in shock of what happened to me yesterday. But anyway, he's killed up either three or four people and is still on the loose. Still running around, probably plotting his way to kill three or four more. So, old oh, bastard, how's that working for you? Oh, there are a lot of young people that have committed mistakes just as I've committed, and they deserve a second chance. I, of all of the crappy things you've done, I don't think you murdered anybody because I don't think America has slipped that low that they put a murderer in the White House. I mean, all of the crap that you've done with your slipshod second grader politics gotten a lot of people killed, like those, those four Marines yesterday. So yeah, you are a murderer, but when you first got your scroungy butt in office, I don't think it killed anybody. So that makes your, your argument ludicrous. 
and stupid, which are your cornerstones, pal. So once again, folks, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad to still be here because I could have been killed. Things happen just that fast. One minute you're here and the next minute you're gone because of stupidity. So, like I said, Mr. Trump, keep going. Don't let him, don't let him phase you. Because you are doing a good thing. Anybody who stands for getting these bastards the hell out of here and shutting the damn door on them is doing a good thing. We've had it. Enough is enough. How much more do we have to take? How many more lives have to be lost? How many lives or people have to be uh, injured and maimed? How many more businesses have to close? How many good programs have to go down the toilet because you idiot politicians are trying to take care of these no-account bastards that slither their asses across the border? Let somebody else take them. God, people are so stupid. To close it out, even something yesterday that happened, or it was yesterday or the day before, in Germany with Angela Merkel, they're facing the same damn problems. In fact, they have taken more foreigners in per capita, being the small country they are, than we have. And she told this little girl from, uh, it wasn't Pakistan, it was uh, Palestine, that's what it was. A little Palestinian girl, 13 years old. I guess she's over there by herself and she was thinking they were gonna bring her parents. And Angela Merkel just simply did like Donald Trump and said, we can't do this. She told the truth. We can't take any more people over here. We're busting at the seams as it is. I would like to tell you that we could bring your parents over and other people of your ethnicity, but we can't. We cannot physically, we cannot financially take care of all these people. And the girl burst out into tears. Oh, well, big whoop. If she was over there in Pakistan, or, or uh, Palestine, which should be, then she wouldn't be crying. And so Angela Merkel, well, you know, if, if you've seen her, she's a very stoic looking woman. You know, I think, I, I believe I heard someone say she's a former scientist. And so she's kind of Spock-esque, you trickies out there. She, you know, only deals in logic and she's not very emotional. But she did go over and try to console this pitiful mess. And everybody's all on Twitter, on Twitter, about Angela Merkel being some kind of monster. The woman isn't a monster. She just told the damn truth. What a sorry-ass world we live in where people are so jaded and, you know, so used to hearing lies that the truth is now a bad thing. Like I said, right is, uh, wrong is the new right in this country. This world, seemingly. America... Uh, United Airlines putting it out there. I think I can kind of understand what they were doing, but still, it, it sent out a bad connotation to me. They've got this new website up or whatever, this new computer thing, and they're giving free frequent flyer miles up in the millions of miles, as I understand it, for anybody that can hack into their system and find bugs in it. Okay, they want people to do this and they reward them, but hacking is a crime. You can get how many miles? One million? Yeah, a million. Flyers. I think it was a million to maybe two million frequent flyer miles for committing a crime. Albeit whether or not it was a, 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 a crime to help them against bigger criminals, but you're rewarding people to commit a crime. Oh, it, it, it's it's mind boggling. So, you know, I just had to get on here and uh, just let you know that I, I have been talking about this thing, but this time it's personal. Because it actually hit me. This bloody foreigner actually hit me. Just go out to do an innocent thing, like pick up some supplies and a little breakfast and you get cream. The good Lord, Mr. Ford, what have you done? The old um, Jerry, uh, Jerry Reed song. Yeah, well, good on you, Mr. Ford, what you did building that Explorer. Because if I weren't in it, 
I probably wouldn't be here with you today. So those of you who are against this, 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 this disgusting spectacle, good on you. Those of you who aren't beating the Tom Toms in support of them, well, maybe you'll get it in the ass one day. And then maybe you'll think, oh, well, maybe everybody else might have been right when your arm is torn off and you're laying out in the street and some bastard hits you or some other heinous thing has happened to you or your family. No, I don't want that to happen to you, but it's destined to happen because they're here. And all of us are holding a lottery ticket to, to disaster. Go talk to those, those, those four servicemen's families and friends and then beat your Tom Toms in support of them and see, don't they beat your ass. Thank you for joining us again for this episode of the Phil Taylor Jones Show. Take care.